So after my last couple videos on doing 3D printed gaskets, I got several requests to do a video about how I make files for those gaskets. And there's a lot of other videos out there about doing this sort of procedure or process, but there's not really one on this specific topic. I thought, what the hell, I'll just do one with three different ways to do this. So the first way of doing it is just simple measurement way. People are going to disagree with me on this, but this is probably just as quick for a very simple gasket. For instance, this gasket here. I can trace this gasket just to get a rough outline of it. I'm not tracing the gasket to measure the trace. I'm just tracing the gasket to give me something to work with. Put it up on my ruler. I'm not even going to use calipers here. Five centimeters is the center to center distance between the holes. So this is five centimeters. The holes are, let's say, 8.5 millimeters. And our center hole is is actually 30 millimeters. The distance from the outer wall to the center hole is yeah, it's approximately 7 millimeters. So we know this distance is 7 millimeters. That's every measurement we need. We can go to Fusion and draw it up. For the CAD portion of this video I'm going to use Fusion 360. You can use any program you want. They're all going to share the pretty much the same functionality. Maybe the third example that I give, they might not all have that functionality, but uh, they're all gonna be pretty much the same. Let me also say right up front that this is not an instructional program how to use CAD programs. I am an amateur at this, I am self-taught, so I have a lot of bad habits, so don't follow my habits. I just wanna show you the steps of what I'm doing, basically. If any power users of Fusion 360 want to chime in in the comments and give me some tips on what I could do differently to improve my workflow, please let me know. I'm always trying to learn. I know one thing you're all going to say, use shortcuts. I know. I'm trying to learn the shortcuts now. So all I've done here is create my three hole circles with the proper diameter. And now I'm just putting the distance between the two outer ones, which is 50 millimeters. I did that using the dimension tool. And then I'm going to use the symmetry constraint to constrain them around the origin. Just selecting one, selecting the other, and then highlighting the origin, which isn't actually viewable right now, but I will make it viewable here in just a second. There we go. And there's our center line. So now we are all centered up. Then I'm going to make larger circles around these. Now these circles are going to be the original hole diameter plus the extra border that's on the edge so seven millimeters but it's actually 14 millimeters because it's both sides so 8.5 plus 14 gives us 22 and a half and we'll just do the same thing i love that you can do this where you just put in the equation it's not too bad for this particular problem but uh, now on this this is one thing i would like somebody to maybe give me some pointers on I can start a line here and I want it to be tangent and I can make it tangent to the next circle but how do I make it tangent to begin with on both circles but you see here I'm stretching the line out and making sure that the cursor is changing to a tangent see so right there and that's tangent but now I have to go back and I have to make the other side of this of the line I have to make it tangent so it's kind of an extra step. I'm sure there's a way to do this to where your your line will um, immediately become tangent, but uh, I'm not sure about it. I am not an expert user on Fusion 360. I initially wasn't going to do this video, but I thought, no, there. I do have three different ways of doing this, so maybe I can show them that. Like I said, I did have several people ask me about doing this. A lot of people get 3D printers, but they're not really... They don't really know how to use uh, CAD programs, and if you have a 3D printer and don't know how to make your own files, it it gets uh, it probably gets boring quick. Let's just put it that way. All right, so now that I got our outside shape and everything is in proper alignment, I can just delete the or cut trim the excess pieces that I don't want. And technically, you probably don't even have to do this with this, but I'm just going to clean it up. So there we are. That's it. That is our gasket. Now we'll just finish the sketch and extrude it. 
We'll make it about, uh, let's just put it two millimeters. That'll make it visible. And there it is. That is our 3D file. So we can then export that as a STL file, which is what our slicer will use to make the G code for the 3D printer. And then in the slicer program for the 3D printer, we can see our file here. And you'll notice that I am using 0.24 of a millimeter layer height and 100% infill. We'll slice that and then we'll look a preview of what the G code is going to do. And there it is. You notice we've got three walls on the outside and around the holes, and then the rest is just alternating lines. So, the second method of doing this is let's say you have a gasket like this, which is torn. Uh, and you have the cover, but you but the gasket is is all torn up. This is a good candidate for the photograph method, and you can use the photograph method for either way. You can use it for a gasket that you have or the cover itself. But what you want to do is put it on a, a contrasting background, such as a white background. Get as much light down onto it as possible. Eliminate as many shadows as you can, and then just take any camera. Get as squared as you can over it as possible and take your picture. And in this method, you only have to take one measurement and you can take any of the measurements. For instance, if you want, you can just take a whole diameter, approximately eight millimeters, just a little bit over eight millimeters. You could take the distance between here. You could take that over here. You could take the outer distance. It doesn't matter. You just need one measurement. You can also do this on a photocopier if you want to put your greasy part on your photocopier. So we've got our part photographed. Now we can use the canvas under insert and fusion to bring in that photograph into the uh, workspace. You'll notice here that it looks a little bit small, but that's okay. We're going to size it in just a second. We're going to right click and hit calibrate. And then we'll zoom in. We'll take that whole measurement of eight millimeters and we'll mark one side and then the other side call that eight millimeters and it gets real big it has now scaled the photograph based on that one measurement now I'm just going to use uh, another tool here which is the uh, edit canvas and we're just going to kind of by eye I'm going to rotate this a little bit just to get it to where it's kind of square And also I want to show you, you can actually use the edit canvas to make it dimmer or, or more opaque or more transparent, basically. So then we'll create a sketch and we're going to be basically the same thing that we did in the first one, except now we have something to trace. So I'm just going to use the center rectangle tool here and just kind of get somewhere in the vicinity of one of the corners. But I also can see that I need to move the photograph over a little bit because I want it the, the part to be as centered as possible. I just kind of got to do this by quickly by eye. And I'm actually a little bit off there because that rectangle centered, but you get the idea. So we're going to remove the constraints here in the center, these two crossing dotted lines. Those are constraints so that I can move each side individually. We're going to get those lined up with our outer edge to where we like them. And then we can start doing our circles. And by centering the part like this, it makes it easier going on to, to make everything else. So then we can do our holes. Again, just doing this by eye. Uh, I do know the holes are 8mm, so I know what to make the circles 8mm. We'll just go to each one. Now, on the bottom holes, I actually messed up when I took the picture. I should have cleaned out those holes. Let's just ignore that, and, and I'm just going to show you the whole procedure here with, with doing it. But truly, to get this more accurate, you, you would want to clean out the holes of the old gasket material because, as you can see, it's hard to see exactly where the hole is. So I'm just kind of going to guess, 
guess. Also, if you want to be very accurate, you can take the hole to hole measurement, the center center point measurement, uh, and and put that in here. But honestly, with a gasket like this, this is going to be close enough. We're going to make the inner rectangle. And the way I'm going to do that is just by lines, just because I have something to trace. I'm just going to trace out the center with its little cutouts. And using, you notice that the cursor will change when you're at a 90 degree. That's why I kind of made this thing so that it was square to the world. And then we can do our fillets on the edge. And again, I'm just doing these by eye. By eye. Get in close, and once you do one, if you click just the right place, it'll replicate that same thing, just like that, just like that, and just like that. And that's it. Adjust if we want to, make any adjustments we want to, and look at our gasket. And we can finish the sketch, and I'll make the canvas transparent so it's not in the way. We'll do it two millimeters again. Now I'm just showing you there, you can do it by hand or you can just type it in. And there's our gasket. Now for the third way of doing this, we're going to use this gasket, which is a little bit more complicated. For this gasket, you could do the photograph method and tracing these lines. But I'm going to do something which I think is a little cooler. In this case, I'm going to use a flatbed scanner and I'm going to scan this because you get a little bit better resolution when we go to the next step. But you could do it, do this also with just a photograph. If you get enough uh, contrast on your paper and uh, get a good photograph straight up and down, it will work as well. But there may be a little bit more cleanup at the end, and we'll see what I mean by that in a minute. So let's go inside, put this on the flatbed scanner, and get a scan of it. Oh, and I should mention, you also are going to need this, a single measurement off of this as well. So let's take this whole measurement, and we can see that that's 7.5 approximately. So we'll call that 7.5 millimeters. I'm going to pause the video here real quick just to mention that this program is Photoshop. It's actually Photoshop Elements. It's from a few years ago, but it's basically the same thing. You can use any photo manipulation program you want to do this. these next couple steps. This might all seem very complicated, but it's really just a couple of operations in the photo software. Uh, if you have a CreCut machine, you have uh, something called design space which I understand does basically the same thing as this but it may be more automated so basically what I'm going to do here is I've brought my image in I'm going to use a selection tool to put a selection mask around the gasket the white is outside of the selection tool then I'm going to go to levels and you may have to find this on yours under mine it's on adjust brightness and I'm going to move the the left level all the way to the right. So that's the dark level all the way to the right. Then I'm going to go to modify smooth and all this is going to do is smooth out the selection that I made. It's going to take out some of those ragged parts around the edges. You see this part right here where it's actually eliminated that little piece sticking out. Now you can play around with the smoothing and get it a little better or a little worse by entering different values. That's all I'm doing here. And then I'm going to use the fill bucket and fill the inner gasket in black. I'm going to invert the selection so that I'm selecting the white section and fill it with white. And what that's going to do is take all that fuzziness around the edges. And that's really the whole operation that I'm doing here. Like I said, it looks like there's a lot going on, but it's really just turn it black and use the selection tool and the invert selection tool to get rid of the fuzzies. Then I'm just going to save that this file as a PNG file and then take that file to an online file converter, converter called Convertio, and convert this PNG file, image file, to an SVG, which is a vector file. Then I can bring that in to Fusion 360 by doing the insert SVG. I will pick a plane to put it on and 
scroll out and there is our SVG now at this point I'm gonna kinda of do the same thing I did in the last uh, method I'm just gonna kinda of center it up and there's one extra step here you see that it is green that means that it's fixed so what we need to do is use the select icon select the whole thing right click on it and then select unfix fix unfix that'll turn it blue once it's blue it's selectable and I will use the dimension tool to dimension the hole to our 7.5 millimeter and when I do that the whole thing is then dimensioned properly now the cool thing here is this is all I have to do it is already a sketch I just finished the sketch select it and extrude and it's done and you see here we have nice smooth edges and in just a second here I will show you what it looks like when you don't do the previous step with Photoshop if you just try to try to bring that photo or try to convert that photo to an SVG you see here see how lumpy it is on the edges this is the one I did not mess with or mess around with in Photoshop it's real lumpy and again you can print it like this it's not an issue it just doesn't look as good it's especially visible here but uh, let's let's get rid of that and go back to our our good one click off that and click on our good one and you see the difference right away how smooth it is around the edges so it's a little bit of art to uh, just manipulate the photo a little bit to make it smoother around the edges but uh, the results are are pretty good and you have to admit that's a lot less work than trying to trace this thing out so if you're interested in this uh, 3d printing gaskets sort of thing I got a bunch of videos on them I'll put some links here at the end as always guys I appreciate you watching and I hope you got something out of this thanks for watching